Good evening. Thank you very much for joining us. This is Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. I'm Ruth Aguela. Let's begin by reports reaching us from Edo State that are saying that the Edo State government has um, stated that the government warehouse breached in medical stores road, Benin City, storing palliative materials and medical supplies served as strategic reserve to mitigate eventualities in the state. In a statement, Special Advisor to the Governor on Media and Communication Strategy, Mr. Crusoe Osagi said, Upon receipt of relief materials, there has been an ongoing process of distribution for the past seven months to the vulnerable and poor population to mitigate the impact of the COVID-19 crisis in the state. Explaining that the vandalized warehouse stored some strategic medical assets, he said the items looted include vaccines, high-end equipment and other supplies. He also noted that the government has distributed most of the palliative materials sent to the state and what was stored at the warehouse, which has now been breached, was strategic to mitigate eventualities. According to him, the other warehouses for food supplies in Edo State are empty, as the relief materials that were earlier housed in them have all been distributed. In the analysis of the trend of coronavirus pandemic by scientists across the globe, studies have shown that there was going to be a second wave of the pandemic. This has been proven to be true in most parts of Europe, where there has since been a second round of shutdown with its attendant economic implications. With this and other possible eventualities, it is only wise for government to have a strategic reserve, he said. He added that it was also important to note that in the past few weeks, the government has been able to fall back on this strategic reserve in response to the plight of the people displaced by flooding in parts of Esako Central, Esako East and Eastern Southeast local government areas. An inquiry state to the state governor, Abdurrahman Abdurrazak, has declared a 24-hour curfew in Ilori in the state capital following the breakdown of law and order in the metropolis while well, the governor said the decision was taken after an emergency security council meeting. For joining me in, it was a massive looting spree here in Ilori, Kwara State Capital, uh, Friday, uh, like an orchestrated activities across uh, the town. And it all started in the afternoon when a group of people uh, attacked the cargo uh, terminal inside uh, the Ilori International Airport. They went to the customs office at uh, Edo Road, and uh, that continued, but um, they were repelled actually by officers and men of by the customs service. Some casualties, the number yet to be confirmed, were actually uh, recorded in that uh, uh, case. But immediately after that, uh, they got uh, to discover another storage uh, facility at uh, Agro or roads that led to that uh, storage facility at a uh, Greek. People were shouting, shop price, shop price, signaling uh, information that attention has been shifted to that part mm. of. Mm. Um, the town at a party. <laughs> Now, why should the government be keeping relief materials that were supposed to have been distributed to the people? Uh, all others are saying that should that be the explanation for attacking uh, ShopRite 2, which is a private uh, business outfit? What all of this speaks to is uh, the level of uh, volatility of uh, situation in the country. Immediately after that, the state governor, Abdrahman Abdrazak, uh, went on to broadcast to the state um, after his meeting with security agencies and he condemned that act as that of criminality. And according to him, the state government has directed security agencies uh, to take charge of the situation under this 24-hour curfew and investigate into the matter. All right, our correspondent there, Masbah Dangwahab, giving us a situation report from Ilori. In Nasser State, stakeholders at a meeting in Lafayette express unalloyed support to the federal government on measures towards resolving NSAS protests and economic empowerment initiatives for youth, women and the vulnerable in society. Aliyu Tijani Mohammed reports. The meeting is part of engagement to contain the escalation of NSAS protests in parts of the country while sustain dialogue with youth on the need to key into various empowerment programs initiated by government to address their grievances. 
We are gathered here today to appraise the present security challenges with a view to finding solutions and sustainable peace, especially in our own state of Nasarawa. To emphasize on the need to give peace a chance and for the youth to embrace dialogue as a means of redressing any passive grievances. And for our president, state masters in handling the issues, particularly is broadcast to the nation. Stakeholders appeal to youth to end the protests as their five point demands are being addressed by government. They also commend security agencies in the state for being proactive in addressing security challenges in the state. In Lafia, Aliu Tijen Mohamed, NTA News. President Muhammad Buhari's speech on NSAT's protests has been described as soul healing. Following the turn, the earlier planned peaceful protests took in some parts of the country. Abubakar Usman Akwanga reports that chieftains of the All Progressives Congress say commitment should be sustained in permanently addressing issues inimical to national cohesion. Recent weeks, the nation has found itself in a difficult situation fueled by the NSAS protesters leading to damage of public and private infrastructure and assets. In a broadcast to the nation, President Mohamed Buhari made an appeal to those detention which disturbed the peace in some parts of the country. Commending the president's commitment to contain the situation, former chairman, Progressive Governors Forum, and senator in the Ninth Assembly, Rochas Okorocha, says what the country desires is greater cooperation to overcome the trying times. Similarly, the Director General Progressive Governance Forum, Saliu Mohamed Lukman, lauded the well-developed and pragmatic solutions inherent in the speech of the President and appealed to NSAS protesters to patiently wait for the implementation of their demands in the coming week. We must give peace a chance and we must allow this nation, this great nation that the entire Africa depends on, to thrive in peace. What started a few days ago as a peaceful protest has resulted into Nigeria again losing many souls and and again uh, burning properties and people living in fear. This situation was quite unfortunate. But if government is going to, and I think that is the frustration of government, if government is going to engage, it's not going to engage in the street. At a point there has to be representation on the part of young people that can meet government. So these are some of the details that I think uh, force us into a, the current stalemate. They say the level of destruction suffered as a result of the uprising is monumental and urged stakeholders, regardless of party and religious divides, to close ranks in quelling the protest. In Abuja, Abubakar Usman Akwanga, NTA News. In another development, the All Progressives Congress has expressed sadness over the tragedy that happened in parts of the country a few days ago, an appeal to Nigerians to halt the continued activities of those disguising as the NSERS protesters, and also called on the youths to extricate themselves from the activities of the criminal elements perpetrating violence and attacking innocent Nigerians for the collective corporate interests of the country. Well, the ruling party says it is committed to the ideals of democracy and recognizes the inalienable rights of the citizens to demand for changes in conditions which trample on their liberties, freedom of association, freedom of speech and well-being through peaceful means and rule of law, acknowledging the peaceful commencement of the protests until it became violent, destructive and disorderly as hoodlums virtually took over. The APC condoles with the families of Nigerians who lost their loved ones and pray that Almighty God will grant them the fortitude to bear the loss and replenish all those whose property were destroyed. The party also commended President Muhammad Buhari, who quickly responded and disbanded a special anti-robbery squad of the Nigerian police as demanded by the protesting youths, including the review of salaries of the Nigerian policemen as announced by Mr. President. It called on Nigerians to embrace peace and work together irrespective of political, religious and ethnic differences to build sanity, strengthen peace and unity of the nation to ensure the corporate existence of our great country, Nigeria. Concerned leaders in River State have also called for more engagement of youths through dialogue towards emic 
amicable resolution of the current crisis arising from the nationwide protests. Well, this is as the leaders condemned the wanton destruction of public property by perceived miscreants who hijacked the genuine cuss by Nigerian youths. Kinsley Amajiri will tell us more. The nationwide peaceful protest, the nation was greeted with a violent crisis. What kind of message you send by destroying uh, uh, agencies or offices that will help the people? Currently, you want to burn down banks? Is that a protest? Is that our demand? Let the government assure the youth that the characters of SARS will never repeat itself. To some civil society leaders, the traditional rulers, the clergy, and influential citizens should also help broker peace. We are interfacing between the youth and at the same time with the Nigerian government, including other stakeholders, to make sure we achieve peace in this struggle. Keen watchers are of the view that job creation at various levels of government would as well help why youths should also organize themselves to assert their way to leadership. In Port Harcourt, Kingsley Amajiri, NTA News. A non-governmental organization committed Youths for Better Nigeria Forum has also joined all the well-meaning Nigerians to urge the youths not to allow themselves to be used by unpatriotic persons in the society to destroy the peace and unity of our country, Nigeria. Regretting the lives lost and property destroyed as a result of the ongoing ancestors' protests across the country, which has gone violent, the group com commended the Inspector General of Police and all the security agencies for their efforts in controlling the situation so far. President Muhammad Buhari has spoken and has heard the protesters. Please, we should all exercise patience and allow the process of reform to take its course. The Youth Forum also appealed to the state governments to ensure that jobs are created for the Timin youths to get them busy and more productive. Similarly, the youth wing of the Nigeria Interreligious Council is calling on the ANSAT's protesters to back down and give peace and dialogue a chance. Timothy Yusuf reports that the Muslim and Christian youth of Nigeria under the banner of the council are charged with the responsibility of promoting peaceful coexistence. This group of Muslim and Christian youth believed that the violence that took over what was initially peaceful and SARS protest was avoidable if the protesters had not allowed hoodlums to hijack and disrupt the process in some parts of the country. They want the protesters to put an end to the demonstrations to avoid further hindrance to national development. Because of the hijacking of the protest, we suggest we go for dialogue. We are all concerned about building a better Nigeria. So let us remain partners in building peace. It is time for them to really allow the government to work on the proposals. Another group of youth under the banner of Nigeria Youth Organization at a road walk in Abuja is urging fellow youth to give peace a chance, as it believes that the present administration remains committed to improving the well-being of the citizenry. Give peace a chance. There is no country that can survive war. So we are begging our youth that let us allow Mr. President to implement what he has approved for us. Both the youth wing of the Nigeria Interreligious Council and the Nigeria Youth Organization maintains that dialogue remains the most effective tool for this spirit resolution. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf, NT News. Well, the leaders of South East have condemned the attempt by some ethnic groups, alleging that ANSAR's protest is an ethnic affair. The chairman of South East Governor's Forum and Governor of Ebony State, David Umahi, would brief journalists at the end of their virtual meeting in Abakalike. Kinsley Okoro will tell us more. Making reference to a video threading in social media alleged to have emanated from Imam De Kano, branding ASAS protest to an Igbo agenda. Governor David Omahi says it's not true and it's not saying the mind of Igbo leaders. We as leaders of Southeast do condemn in strong terms the audio video in circulation in social media said to have emanated from Mr. Namdekalo, though he has since denied it. We condemn the attempts by some ethnic groups to brand answers the affairs of the Ibus. 
He said there was nothing wrong in the peaceful protesters' demand, which the government is already working hard to fulfill. Governor Omaharada called on leaders of other zones to work with the security agencies within the ambit of the law to secure lives and property of the people. We want to appeal to all our people all over Nigeria and beyond to please disembark from NSAS protest. So I appeal to uh, our brothers from the north, our leaders from the north, our leaders from the west, our leaders from south, south, all our leaders all over the nation to please do everything to continue to maintain peace among all the ethnic groups. When condemning killings of Lakey peaceful protesters, Governor Omahe called on the youth from the zone to pull out of Elsa's protest and dialogue for the good of the country. On the destruction of public facilities in the state by the hoodlums, the governor directed security agents and youth from the state to work in synergy to avert further destruction. In Abakaliki, Kingsley Okoro, and a news. And we hear that normalcy is gradually returning to Akure and all the major towns in Ondo State after days of violent demonstrations by hoodlums who hijacked the peaceful answers protest by youths. Abiola Ariwo reports that um, the 24-hour curfew imposed on the state by the state government is still in force. Oh, life is gradually returning to normal. Akure still bears the telltale signs of the mayhem unleashed on the state by hoodlums when they hijacked a peaceful protest by hashtag NSAS protesters. Though a 24-hour coffee is still in force, the people are happy to resume their normal life as markets are busy with buying and selling. Commercial taxi and Okada operators have resumed business while shops and malls are open to business. Many commended the efforts which saved the situation and brought back peace to the land. They want to bring Akure backward. Eh? When they start to burn good places, good institutions, good places in town. Uh, actually, we thank God for today. Today is calm. Very, very calm. People are moving, moving around peacefully and going back peacefully. They say the destruction of the past three days was much and called on governments to commence the process of healing. Without mincing words, you are the leaders of tomorrow. Then don't use your own hands to destroy that tomorrow. I will ask them to call for dialogue instead of uh, making people uh, using force on them. Call them dialogue. They will dialogue together and they will find a reasonable solution to the whole matter. Major streets of Akure are still littered with debris and charred remains of tires burnt in the middle of the road by the hoodlums in Akure, Apiola, Rio, NTA News. Our next stop is Lagos State, where Adiola will guide us, but that will be after we go on this break. So you stay tuned. The recent genuine concerns and agitations by Nigerians about the excessive use of force and in some cases extrajudicial killings and wrongful conduct by means of the Nigerian police force. The disbanding of SARS is only the first step in our commitment to extensive police reform in order to ensure that the primary duty of the police and other law enforcement agencies remains the protection of lives and livelihoods of our people. We will also ensure that all those responsible for misconduct or wrongful acts are brought to justice. We also deeply regret the loss of life of the young men in Ohio State during the recent demonstrations. I have directed that the circumstances of his death should be thoroughly investigated. Meanwhile, it is important to recognize that the vast majority of men and women of the police force are hardworking and diligent in performing their duties. The few bad eggs should not be allowed to tarnish the image and reputation 
of the force. Do you desire to upscale your skills and capacities for better productivity? Then you need to attend the following courses organized by NTA TV College JAWS, English Grammar and Pronunciation for Broadcasters. Date 26th October to 20th November 2020. Protocol Event Management and Public Relations. Date 2nd to 13th November 2020. Intermediate Camera Operation Techniques. Date 2nd to 13th November 2020. Intermediate Online News Reporting Skills. Date 16th to 27th November 2020. The course fee for the four-week course is 100,000 Naira per participant, while the fee for other courses is 80,000 thousand naira only accommodation inclusive venue for all courses is the serene and secure environment of nta television college near old government house rayfield jaws for more inquiries please call 0803-314-4383 or 0806-980-9807 nta tv college jaws training you to be the best you want to be Mr. President said the youth of this country have spoken and he has heard and he has since gone to work for the youth of our country, not just as a president, but even as, as a father of the younger generation. The real Nigerian youth is a patriot, not a tool of destabilization. Mr. President made an appeal to the Nigerian youth that this protest, wherever held, should be done in a peaceful manner. The Nigerian youth should be on their guard to make sure that elements that will infiltrate and distract them from the very purpose of their protest should be prevented from doing so. Listen to the voice of reason. Thank you for joining us in Lagos. Mobile police officers have taken over the security of Lekki Toll Plaza to prevent any further vandalism. Abolade Salami is on standby to bring us update. Hello, Abolade. Thank you so much, Adiola. I am presently at the Lekki Toll Plaza in Lekki. The spot I'm standing on presently, a few days ago, was not possible for vehicles. This spot was barricaded by youths who were calling for an end to the operation of SAS. But as I speak with you right now, this place is the void of any form of gathering. The only people we saw when we got here was the presence of mobile policemen who said they are here to ensure security of lives and property. And as I speak with you also, dear life, you can see behind me, vehicles are having a free ride. Vehicles coming in from the mainland, going into Lekki proper, are having a smooth ride. Same also applies to vehicles leaving Lekki going to the mainland, having a jolly ride. Diola also, let me let you know that this spot, few days ago, was littered with various types of refuse. But this morning, some Lagosians were gathered here to say they want to ensure Lagos return back to its beauty. They swept this place and took out every refuse. As you see now, the ground is free and it's clean. I'd like to over to you. Thank you, Abolade, for that update. Meanwhile, earlier in the day, I visited the popular Bode Thomas and Adeni Ro Ogunsonya axis of Surulere, one area that experienced a landmark looting by hoodlums who hijacked NSA's protest in Lagos State. People with business concerns in the area are yet to come to terms with the wanton looting and destruction of shops. This is Bode Thomas and Surulere area of Lagos State and most of the shops in this area were vandalized, looted and some of the uh, things, the goods and wares in the shops were actually destroyed by those who hijacked the peaceful NSAS protest and used it to unleash mayhem on the fellow uh, Nigerians. This is where I expected to get something and help our family because after the COVID-19 things, everybody likes that at least the situation is getting better now and these guys came in and just caused pains and sorrow to everybody. 
we have not offended anybody and I don't understand how they did not just come to carry things, they destroyed things. This was very bad because I don't know what to do now. I don't know what to do now. I don't know where to start. What I have for the people who came to my shop to steal is that God will touch their hearts. That everything that they have stolen from my shop, that they will use it to empower themselves. Because when they empower themselves, the crime will reduce. I'm not cursing them. If they are fine, they will not come to my shop. If they are blessed, they will not come to my shop. So I am just praying that at least one soul will be touched. Uh, the shop owners are trying to piece up what they can make from the remnants of the shops that have been destroyed. And uh, good news, sanity is gradually returning to most parts of Lagos metropolis after days of violence while commercial activities are gathering enough confidence for restart. Michael Olaleye reports. The process of rehabilitation and rebuilding has begun. But Lagos, the commercial nerve of Nigeria, may not remain the same for a long time. Empty bus stops and shops are indicating that the confidence to return to normal is still missing in spite of security presence. The security is okay. People are not scared. Nobody is running. Uh, people are moving around like in normal days before. So the good news is that a whole lot of barricades erected across the metropolis by hoodlums for the purpose of extortion have been removed and replaced with security checkpoints. You cannot do force for force. Two wrongs cannot make a right. Oigo, which is within the heart of the metropolis, seems to be the busiest as commercial activities are gradually picking up. This is the Onigo bus terminal, one of the terminals set ablaze by the hoodlums. More than 100 buses were burnt beyond recognition. The implication of this is that Lagos, with a population of more than 20 million people, is likely to face, or rather will face, transportation challenges in the coming days. The easing of curfew over the weekend is a litmus test to determine if it is safe to dip the two feet into an ocean. In Lagos, Michael Olale, NT News. So much from here. Ruth is back to you. Many thanks, Adiola. President Muhammad Buhari has commended youths in Jigawa State for the peaceful nature they conducted um, themselves in the recent ANSES protests in parts of the country. Well, this was in a special message presented by Minister of Water Resources Suleiman Adamu to Jigawa State Governor. Mohamed Musa Eskira has details. Jigawa State had, during the ANSES protests, organized a peaceful and orderly march pass in support of President Muhammad Buhari's decision to disband the special anti-robbery squad known as SAS in response to the demands advanced by the youth demonstrators in the country. This, the minister stated, is the reason President Muhammad Buhari sent him to thank the youth and the government of Jigawa State for the maturity exhibited during the protest. It is of great concern to everybody, to any responsible government, and especially our own, uh, that uh, this kind of things should happen. Hoodlums and enemies of the country hijacked what was meant to be a peaceful protest, uh, which had the listening ears of the government. And in so doing, began to infringe on the rights of other peace-loving citizens of Nigeria. Governor Muhammad Badu Abubakar, who expressed gratitude to President Muhammad Buhari, the governor added that Jigawa State owes the president endless appreciation for what he is doing in the state and the country in general. It's always good feeling for father to say thank you to his sons and daughters. Otherwise, we could have said, Baba have done enough for us that doesn't warrant any thank you coming from him. We would rather go and say thank you to Baba for all what he has been doing to Jigawa State. The minister was also at the palaces of emirs of Hadeja and Dute for the same thank you message and sympathy over the recent flood that affected the state. From Dute, Muhammad Musa Askira, NTN News. 
Well, sequel to some hoodlums breaking into the warehouses where palliatives delivered to the state by the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development last week were stored, that is in Joss, awaiting distribution and carted away. Governor Simon Bakula Long, after an assessment of the situation and to further avoid escalation, has directed the immediate reinstatement of the 24-hour curfew earlier relaxed from 4 p.m. that is today, 24th October 2020, in just south and just north local government areas till further notice. By this, security agencies are directed to enforce the curfew and ensure that all violators are arrested and prosecuted. The River State Government has outlawed the indigenous peoples of Biafra from existing and operating in the state in line with the prescription of the federal government. Now, this is sequel to the unending insurrectional activities of the group in the state. Continued threats, wanton destruction of lives and property perpetrated by IPOP in Oyebo Council area and other parts of the state have necessitated the government to outlaw any form of procession or agitation by the group henceforth. As a stranger element with strange political ideology, therefore, IPOP has no legal or moral right to invade river state or any part therefore at its behest to restore public peace and subject loss of property to violence or threat of destruction under any guise. The state government also declared wanted Mr. Stanley Mberi for allegedly leading IPOP to cause the recent violence in Oyibo Council area and placed a bounty of 50 million naira to be given to anyone with useful information that would lead to his arrest. The governor meets with all leaders of youth groups and community development committees in the state on Monday, the 26th of October, to take holistic measures towards ending all IPOP activities in the state. He appealed for calm as government has the capacity to deal with the challenge. M. Portacot, Oge Dinyekwere, NTA News. Well, Akwaibom State Police Command has recovered looted items worth millions of naira and arrested six suspects who broke into private shops during the Friday evening violent NSERS protest in New York, the state capital. Kelvin Samuel reports that the Commission of Police, um, who disclosed this, assured Uyo residents that all the hoodlums who looted public and private property have been tracked and will be brought to book. In the outbreak of violence by hoodlums who disguised as NSAS protesters on Friday evening and invaded Anchor Insurance and Quibom State Broadcasting Corporation, the Choice Mall, and some shops at the market. What people took loans and uh, sold their assets to even build for and create employment is what they are targeting. Quibom State Police Command swung into action leading to the recovery of most of the stolen goods. Addressing the press on the development, the Commissioner of Police at Kwaibom State, Amiegeme Andrew, while appreciating the people and government of the state for their cooperation that led to the huge success, assured the police will continue to do everything possible to ensure the total recovery of the remaining items as well as maintain adequate security of lives and property of citizens. Quick deployment of anti riot policemen in conjunction with other sister forces such as the Army, the DSS, and all security agencies have yielded good results. Owners of the recovered items, which include refrigerators, television sets, generators, bags of rice, among others, are to report at the state police headquarters, the Kodak Panambia, for identification and collection. In Uyo, Kevin Samuel, NTA News. And in Kano State, community leaders in the state have joined to call on the youths to be law abiding and avoid being used by opportunists to wreak havoc on innocent Nigerians. Parents and guardians should talk to their children to keep away from this kind of trouble because it doesn't take anybody anywhere. It doesn't do any good to anybody. But uh, since their, their message has been sent, that they should calm down. Because Kanu is sensitive, Kanu is so volatile. So there's need for us to uh, do whatever it will cost us to bring peace in Kanu. And that is what we are working for. Uh, we have advised them, and we thank God they have agreed with us 
we plead with everybody to work for peace in Kano. And for peace to reign, that's the way we can all be happy. I was born here, I schooled here, I established here, and all my life is here. Why would I want trouble? So we were able to talk to them and thank God things are going well, and by the special grace of God, there won't be any problem. All right, from um, Kanu, let's head to Ibadan as we join Kami to bring the situation reports from that end. Kami. And welcome to Ibadan. Oyo State Governor Sheyi Makede has again among the answers protesters attempting to raise a police station in Ibadan. Correspondent Ayomiku Ajibala reports. Iwuru and other major areas in Ibadan metropolis were in chaos as hoodlums took over the areas upon receiving the sad news. Governor Sheyi Makede paid on the spot assessment visit to the arrest scene within the metropolis. Addressing the youth and residents of the state, Governor Shiyimakede appealed strongly for calm with the promise that his administration would look into their request and caution them never to allow hoodlums to hijack their peaceful protests. <laughs> He assured the protesters that he will meet with the state commissioner of police and also release the just arrested protesters. Security operatives have rounded up Iwurud and other unrest areas within the metropolis in a bid to restore peace to the hotspots in Ibadan, Ayomiku, Ajibola, NTN News. Lawyers, FIDA or your state branch, is collaborating with the Medical Women Association of Nigeria to provide legal and medical services to any victim of NSAS protest. This was revealed by the chairperson of FIDA, Deborah Collins, in a press briefing in Ibadan. Shala Wahid has the details. The International Federation of Women Lawyers, FIDA, observed that the protesting youths across the state demanded an end to brutality and dehumanizing treatment of the police. A collaborative effort of FIDA, a medical women association of Nigeria, is to provide free legal and medical services to aggrieved individuals and those injured during the protest. FIDA Nigeria or your state branch believes in promotion of the rule of law. The vulnerable in our society, particularly our women, children, and the youth have continuously suffered from social injustice and police brutality. This must stop as we use the instrumentality of the law to get justice for the vulnerable. We heard that the complaints of the protesters we address speedily with adequate stakeholder engagement and those which require time to address be given a workable and achievable timetable. They are our children and our younger ones. Members of the associations commiserated with the families of those who lost their lives in the process and appeal for calm and normalcy to return to the country. In the Barashal Lawahid, NTN News. Residents of Kwara State have been called upon to be committed to ensuring that peace and tranquility is in the state. Commission of Police Kwara State, Kaode Egbetokun, made the call while addressing a stakeholders meeting at the command's headquarters in Ilori. Kaide Omolosho has the report. The meeting, according to the police boss, is to create a synergy with members of the public on the need to allow peace to reign supreme in the society. The stakeholders' meeting, according to the police boss, is imperative in view of the growing violence in some parts of the country. We must be committed to ensuring that the peace in this state is maintained at all costs. And we have to restrain ourselves from doing things that can provoke violence. You are punishing officers. I feel like personally, the information should be made public to why they were dismissed and how the process went. We suggested that we should be a committee that should be named Police Student Judicial Committee. That will give us a synergy and a working relationship between the police and the student leaders in the state. He advised the citizens to refrain from doing anything that can lead to trouble and also be careful about what they read on social media. Stakeholders from various transport unions, student union groups, human rights activists attended the meeting and agreed to be united more than before for a better quora. Kende Omolosho, NTA News. Now more reports with Ruth in Abuja. Thank you, Kemi. The Nigerians and Diaspora Monitoring Group, or HIHO, United States, 
have called on the United Nations, United States, United Kingdom and all the nations to withdraw their statements that appeared to taunt the Nigerian government over the lucky target shooting. In a statement, the Nigerian and Diaspora Monitoring Group said it is only logical for the international community to apologize to President Mahmoud Buhari's government considering the overwhelming evidence now rubbish and supposed to massacre in Lagos State. Like the rest of the world, the group admitted that it reacted with disgust over the alleged shooting of peaceful answers protesters by the Nigerian army. However, it said that sentiments changed after the actual picture of the incident surfaced. According to the group, the peddlers of the fake news carefully planned, selected, manipulated and curated the photographs and videos that were used to mislead key decision makers across the globe. While mourning lives lost in the violence that erupted afterwards, the group said all actors in the ugly saga must be held to book. The group said the country has been in hapless victim, has been the hapless victim of fake news, hence the need for nations to withdraw their earlier statements. Niger State Government has constituted a 10-man judicial panel of inquiry to investigate cases of police brutality in the state as it affects the country. Suleiman Kodogi reports that Governor Abubakar Sani Bello inaugurated the panel in Mina with a call on them to discharge their duties diligently. man panel with Justice Ishaku Usman as chairman and Abraman Tariq to serve as secretary as one man period to complete and submit its report. Terms of reference for the panel include to identify all those who have made claims of police brutality, investigate them and make appropriate recommendations. Governor Abubakar Sani Bello noted that the governors are saddened by the turn of events which became violent across the country by some bad elements, despite the good intention of the youths. We are trying to protest the situation, we are trying to meet the demands of the genuine protesters so that we maintain peace and calm in Nigeria as a whole. So even the police will reach out to them so that they also, uh, they, something must have prompted them if there's any uh, such cases in Niger. The integration of judicial panel of inquiry is the fallout of the NSAS protest across the country, which was hijacked and led to loss of lives and property in Mina, Suleiman Kodogi, NTA News. On our next stop will be Joss and Zenret, who will guide us. Zenret. Thank you, Ruth, and welcome to Joss. Hoodlums have broken into several stores in Jos, housing palliatives, cutting away bags of grains and other assorted items. Caleb Gochin reports that the development caused heavy traffic along the Jos Bukuru Highway. As a movie scene, people started trooping in their hundreds to the Sema warehouse by Nital office Bukuru in the early hours Saturday, having been informed that the place has been broken into. It became a free-for-all affair as those who made it to the store helped themselves with what they could lay their hands on. Other stores that were also broken into are the JIB warehouse and other stores along Bukuru Expressway. The journey for some was long and tedious, but we are determined to have a share. As a result of the tension, it was difficult getting comments from any individual or official. In Jules, Caleb Gochin, NTN News. Following recent developments, the Plata State Governor Simon Lalong has ordered the reinstatement of a 24-hour curfew from 4 p.m. of 24th October in just north and just south local government areas. The governor in a statement issued in just this afternoon said the decision is in response to the disturbances that arose when hoodlums broke into the warehouses where palliatives delivered to the state by the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development were stored a in distribution and carted them away. The governor said to avoid further escalation, he has directed an immediate reinstatement of the 24-hour curfew earlier relapsed from 4 p.m. today, 24th October 2020. He directed security agencies to enforce the curfew and ensure that all violators are arrested and prosecuted, calling on all citizens to cooperate with government in ensuring the return of peace and progress in Plata State.
with a view to finding lasting solutions to the yearnings of the youth and pushing Nigeria forward is necessary to put an end to the hashtag NSAS protest. This was the view of some key players who shared their perspectives on the ongoing protest which has led to violence in some parts of the country. A camera in Kanangladoja reports. As protest has been on for over a week in different parts of the country, but of recent has experienced attacks by thugs who have in many places hijacked the protests. We don't stand to gain anything from destroying those things that are meant to bring soccer to them. If you burn a school or a market or a shop of a trader, you are destroying the community. So they should please uh, take the good part. It's reaction. And then it's good that they reacted. They have the right to protest, but they don't have right to for vandalism and uh, break, breakages and looting. We, to our youths, let them know that tomorrow is theirs. So let them not destroy it by the actions of today. They have to bear this in mind in whatever they do. Having spent so much time at home due to the COVID-19 lockdown, as well as the ongoing ASU strike, are some of the reasons that may have led to the bursting of pent-up anger. They should now go back and wait. If these issues are never properly addressed, to, they still have the right to come out and remind government. Their agitations have been registered. The government are working on it, so they should give them a time. They should identify with the government, appoint leaders to dialogue with the government so that they can be part of the reform that they ask for. They have made their point known to the government. So I thereby urge them to discontinue the protest. They also insist that all forms of brutality and attack on protesters come to an end as they appeal to the security agencies to protect the lives and properties of all Nigerians. In Joss, Ekemarin Kaningladuja, NTA News. That's it from Joss. Nationwide continues in Abuja after this break. From dusk to dawn, 24 hours a day, NTA International is with you in your living room, office, everywhere and anywhere. We provide the company you desire in terms of balanced and up-to-date news, programs and the best of entertainment. Tune in to DSTV Channel 251, Go TV Channel 91, Freeview UK Channel 264 or you can download www.visiontv.co.uk app for iOS or Android, Intelsat 901 degree east. You can also see us on Facebook and YouTube for quality content on the go. NTA International, Africa's window to the world. My name is Nando Jamda. Mohammed. Stevitan. Hussein Musa. Rodima Joel Tinji. Sayyid Musa. John. I'm a carpenter. I've been doing this for more than eight years now. And I said that Lantin. Naka Ichimami Shekara. I've been selling my tomatoes for about 10 years now, and I do it for a better Nigeria. And I do it for a better Nigeria. And I want to say that I'm going to get a little bit of a little bit of a And you can see how we're doing our small little work to make Nigeria great. As you can see, I'm a technician, and I'm doing it to help myself and to help my generation. I'm going to get a little bit of a this message is from the National Orientation Agency. Thanks for staying tuned. The federal government's efforts at promoting electronic governance is gathering pace, we hear, while ministries, departments and agencies are jostling to outperform each other. The latest evaluation conducted by the Bureau of Public Service Reforms and websites of MDAs adjudged the National Identity Management Commission, NIMSI, as the most efficient. Victor Azu engages the Director General of NIMSI on the secrets of this feat. The application of information technology, better known as electronic governance, has over time become very useful in delivering government services to citizens in a convenient, efficient and transparent manner. 
This explains why the federal government has continued to encourage ministries, departments and agencies in that direction while engendering a healthy competition. One of such is the website's ranking of MDAs using criteria that include domain strength, aesthetics, content, security and functionality among others. The most recent ranking released by the Bureau of Public Service Reforms, BPSR, places the National Identity Management Commission, NIMSI, at the top. We designed it in-house. We also have people in-house that are populating it. As much as possible, we, we, we are proactive of all the questions that the uh, general public will have, and we always populate that to make it in also interactive. Indeed, there must be something NIMSI is doing right. Not long ago, an ICPC appraisal on transparency in governance rated NIMSI overall third among government agencies. These achievements may be why on a recent visit to the Commission, the Minister of Communication and Digital Economy taxed the agency to increase its monthly digital identity capture from 500,000 Nigerians to 2.5 million Nigerians. NIMSI's inadequacies notwithstanding, antecedents suggest that it's a target that the Commission is set to surpass. In Abuja, Victor Azu, NTA News. Non-challenge attitude and lack of awareness have been said to be among some of the factors contributing to the alarming rate of oil pipeline vandalism and oil spillage across the country. This was during a curtsy visit to the Nigerian Television Authority headquarters Abuja where the National Oil Spill Detection and Response Agency solicited partnership with the NTA to escalate advocacy on these challenges. Ekemini Williams will tell us more. Two generals, National Oil Spill Detection and Response Agency, Idris Musa, speaking on the alarming frequency of oil spillage in the country. He is seeking partnership with the NTA in order to bring the menace to a stop. And these are the money spent on this ought ordinarily to go to some uh, provision or some other amenities and facilities for the betterment of the Nigerian populace. So these are some of the challenges that we have. And we believe if we begin to sensitize very much more, it will enter the ears of the people more. Director General NTA, Yakubu Ibn Mohammed, on his part, restated NTA's commitments to partnerships geared towards national growth and development. Information is critical, you know, because uh, there's a lot of environmental, you know, uh, nonchalance, environmental illiteracy in this country. I'm offering you free of charge, gratis, <laughs> appearance appearance of one of our personality programs, one-on-one. -on -one. It's a one-hour program. You'll be able to talk at length, you know, you know try and educate uh, Nigerians on the agency, what it does, what we expect of Nigerians, and so on and so forth. In another development, members of the African Union Economic, Social and Cultural Council, led by Tunji Ashaulu, Nigeria's representative, social affairs and health at the AU, also solicited partnership with the NTA in promoting the vast areas of opportunities Nigerian investors can derive from AU strategic development framework, tagged Agenda 2063, the Africa we want. Another partnership-seeking four-man team from the Africa Youth Growth Foundation also paid the NTA a courtesy visit, looking to sensitize youths on the dangers of illegal migration. All these visits were held in strict compliance with COVID-19 protocols. In Abuja, Ekemini Williams, NTA News. And Hawkins Sports Minister of Sports Sunday, Diary Claire's air on indefinite postponement of the National Sports Festival at Do 2020. Adenike Kinam will guide us on sports update. The Minister of Youth and Sports Development, Sunday Diary, has denied reports that the Edo 2020 National Sports Festival has been postponed indefinitely, noting that a final decision has not been made. A statement from the Sports Ministry clarified that consultations are still on between the Ministry, the Edo State Government, the Presidential Tax Force for COVID-19, and the National Council on Sports to decide on a new date to host the Sports Festival, considering a staggered festival spanning several weeks without spectators. 
In another development, Nigerian Flying Eagles will be hoping to book the ticket for the 2021 Under-20 African Cup of Nations shadows for Mauritania when it takes on the Under-20 side of Ghana and Côte d'Ivoire in the forthcoming Waffle Cup taking place in Togo from the 18th of November to 2nd of December. The Flying Eagles have appeared in 17 AFCON, winning it seven times and played at the Waffle Cup twice with a silver medal in 2018. Having them in the same group is going to be tough. When they go there, if that determination, that Nigerian spirit will give them a chance. The 2020 CAVP elections holding this weekend online for the first time due to the coronavirus pandemic will see the two top contestants going for the post of president. The are incumbents, Dr. Amir Elwani and Bushra Ajiji, who has been an active elective member of the board of directors of the African Volleyball Confederation. In the English Premier League, there will be three matches on Sunday. Southampton pays host to Everton, Wolves squares up against Newcastle, while Arsenal faces Leicester City. With sports updates at Denny Kekinam, NTA News. And that's the part where we say thank you for being a part of Nationwide. I'm Ruth Haguela. Bye.